Starting from my left, we have the Mouser 5 pack. So this is a battle pack. You've got your standard Mouser. He can walk, he can open his mouth and go like, hey man, I'm kinda hungry. Hungry for turtle. I don't know if they eat turtles. I don't really think so. They're just like, chomp, 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 chomp. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and today's comment of the weekly comes from Lar E, who writes, Dear Casey. No, that's not what it said. That's an old person joke. You'll get it if you get it. Speaking of pronunciations, not sure if I previously heard someone pronounce prevalent that way. Yeah, I said prevalent. That's what happens when <laughs> you read a bunch of comic books as a kid without, you know, researching how to actually pronounce some of the words in villain speeches and heroes being heroes. I think we've talked about it during several live streams, although in those cases it's usually code names for superheroes like, you know, Paladin. I think the first time I said that out loud to someone, in fact I think it was Veebs, he kind of looked at me like, what'd you just say? Paladin. I have to pause and make sure I'm saying it right. You just never know what you're gonna hear once I extend myself beyond my usual repertory of monosyllabic words. Poke the bear, poke, poke, poke. Last week we saw the one teaser picture for the 3-0 MDLX Transformers Optimus Prime, which is impressive on its own with its 80s inspiration and its crouch down pose, but this week we get a little bit more. Well, I say a little bit, a lot. I actually say a little bit, a lot. I, I, I notice when I'm editing videos, I need to knock off the little bit. To recap, the MDLX line is a scaled down version of their DLX line while keeping all the key features. Although in that line they were doing like modern movies, here they went old school cartoon flavor but with some techie twist to it. Basically different style, smaller size, same level of quality when it comes to sculpt, paint, and articulation, cheaper price point. Optimus comes with a plethora of hands, ion cannon, energy axe, and the matrix. It's odd to see the whole chest plate come off to put the matrix in the chest, but maybe they didn't want extra hinges or, or, or it didn't work with this mix of die cast and plastic or some odd reason, who knows. Either way, I was right when I said it would be about seven to eight inches. It is seven inches tall, but I blew my prices right bid of $99. This is actually $80 on Big Bad Toy Store. That's kind of crazy. Bumblebee, five inches, $60. Optimus, well, okay, that's two more inches for 20 more bucks. That does make sense. I don't know what I was thinking. Scheduled to ship quarter two of 2022. I have no idea where this picture came from, but it appears to be a sneaky peeky of the prototype for the amazing Yamaguchi Superman. Not a lot to go on. It looks to be modernized like they do with a lot of their figures and it'll probably end up a nice companion to the Batman they already released. But the cape is weird, which is not a surprise because it's amazing Yamaguchi, but ah, oh, it's weird. Last Monday, Foosh Live, it took way too long for people to convince me that that wasn't a Bob Dylan type harmonica rig around his neck. That's actually the cape high up on the other side and it just happens to line up with his chin. No pictures allowed. We weren't looking at anything we weren't supposed to. We're good toy collectors. <laughs> It's Kickstarter season, it looks like, and a few are catching my eye. Well, there is one I missed, and even though it is fully funded, and in fact, I think it's like two and a half times funded, but that is the Beasts of the Mesozoic Tyrannosaur series. There's still some time to go, and there's still some stretch goals to pass. If you are unaware like me, there are two scales at play here. There's 135th and 118th. Two scales that I don't usually talk about here on the Foosh. We usually stick to 112th or slightly larger but it's dinosaurs. You can fit these in anywhere. Even if it's small, you can just say, oh, it's a teenage T-Rex, a teen Rex. Plus the figures just look awesome. There's a couple of different color schemes to choose from for each scale. And if you keep scrolling, there's even offerings for other dinosaurs, juvenile tyrannosaurs, which if you're dealing with larger scales would be even smaller, but hey, that's cool. It's still a T-Rex. Then there's even more dinosaurs that are beyond my realm of pronunciation. I'm not even gonna try, but they're cool looking. Something to point out with the T-Rex is there's two sets of legs, one articulated and then one unarticulated to help that kind of lumbering, oddly proportioned neutral position pose. Big old head, little bitty arms, more of the body up forward past the legs, just the tail in the back to counterbalance. So that makes sense. Bottom line, dinosaurs, 
Go get you some. And while you're on Kickstarter, give the Robo Skull Mark II a gander. Why, yes, it is weird calling a bloody decapitated noggin bone a Robo Skull. Beyond that awkward personal hurdle, it looks like some old school toy goodness. It's a skull that is actually a ship. If that ain't a love letter to cartoons from the 70s and 80s, I don't know what it is. And it should be because of this, I learned that the Robo Skull was an actual vehicle in Action Force. Who knew? Besides everyone else, I guess. Now, the first time I got linked to it, I was reading and I nearly clicked out because I thought, oh, this is geared towards three and three quarter inch because of the Marauder Inc. offerings. But then I noticed that you can open up the cockpit, pull out the double seats for three and three quarter inch, and put in one seat that is scaled for 112th. It goes from a smaller scale warship to a larger scale personal fighter. Holy shit. And if you like some mustard in your ketchup, there is an alternate paint scheme to give it more of a hot rod feel, I think. Or maybe the yellow denotes a different rank within the Robo Skull Army. $219 for the ship itself, which is not too bad when you realize how big it actually is. And it seems like quite a few people thought the same thing because this funded within hours and blew through all of the stretch goals, including some effects, some more three and three quarter figures, I think. But the goal at $196,000 was a six inch scale pilot for this ship. That's right up my alley. That's why I'm standing here talking about it because is this so weird that I can just have this raining terror down upon my Fortnite figures and my legends and even Star Wars? It's kind of TIE Fighter-esque, right? Why do I keep talking myself into this stuff? <laughs> but the big question is, is there going to be a bearded variant? Hmm? Mm -hmm. If you're interested, link is in the description. Jada Toys is keeping their Universal Monsters Ball rolling. Monsters Ball. <laughs> I didn't even catch that until after I said it. But they're rolling on with an exclusive Frankenstein's Monster. I took a look at Wave 1 a couple of months ago with, uh, well, Frankenstein's Monster, Dracula, Bride of Frankenstein, and then Creature from the Black Lagoon. And what can I say? I dig them. 112 scale without going full-on likeness from the movies. It's kind of that... Like magazines or comic books or when you look at them you know who they are but because they aren't like super movie accurate you can put them on your star wars your other six inch shelf star wars i don't know why i went with star wars first it probably worked better in marvel legends wouldn't it or ghostbusters even why didn't i go there first still one hell of a first outing for a company that's not really known for six inch super articulated action figures for the deluxe frankenstein monster though they've thrown him into a black and white color scheme and it also includes a table and straps for all kinds of diorama fun all wrapped in a fancy package that you can only get on jada toys new direct market site next level so it is exclusive to there it is 40 bucks it's set to ship in december we've seen the listing for the mattel masters of the universe masterverse revelation savage he-man for a while now but no pictures. And until I see plastic, I don't retain information. That's just how I'm built. But this week, Mattel sent out promo images, and it may be a little bit spoilery. Well, depending on how you look at it. I guess you could assume some things, or maybe it's just Mattel being Mattel. If you do want to go into the next set of episodes, minty fresh, not knowing anything, or you think Kevin Smith ruined your childhood, go ahead and skip to the next chapter. I lined them up all across the bottom right there. You knew what you were getting into. Go ahead and enjoy some Andre the Giant goodness here in a minute. If you're still here, spoilers. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. The Savage He-Man is deluxe because it comes with Orko. And I say it may be spoilery because the promo image for the show that was posted the same day these were posted does have Savage He-Man from the back rushing towards Skelegod. Including Orko, does that mean he comes back in the next few episodes? Wouldn't be a surprise. It's a cartoon. It's fantasy happens all the time. Or is Mattel just using this opportunity to come back around to give us Orko? Packing a character that proved more popular than they thought he would be in the first few episodes with a naked He-Man that they were afraid wouldn't sell on its own. No matter how you crumble that cookie, sly marketing tactics. He-Man is using the same body we've seen several times that is just par for the course when it comes to this kind of line, but the hair does do something to offset the tiny headedness that we've seen with previous figures. Orko just looks awesome though. Although in most of the pictures he is looking up and that gives his emotional range somewhere from sad to puppy dog. Then in the pictures showing all the accessories and everything, he's looking straight forward and oh, it changes the mood completely. Not gonna lie, if these were single packed, Orko is a definite buy, I'd probably pass on Savage He-Man as is. 
I'll probably buy this pack just to have Orko. God damn it, Mattel! You woo! No release info yet. They just threw these pictures out as soon as they saw Netflix release their picture, and they thought, oh. People know about Orko, people know about Savage He-Man now. Ba-bam! Sticking with Mattel, something that popped up on Walmart's Collector Con <laughs> as soon as I posted the last weekly was the WWE Hollywood Elite Andre the Giant as Bigfoot. I know what you're thinking. It's just a dude wearing a shag carpet and contacts. And we'd both be right. But remember, it was 1976. This is fairly accurate. Although I'm starting to feel like Andre the Giant's hair is kind of like Mark Hamill that you can't quite capture it in plastic form. Mattel, Super 7, McFarlane, valiant attempts, but it just doesn't capture that glory. It ends up looking kind of like a mushroom. If you're looking to add a big furry action figure to your collection, this is still available on walmart.com for $20, ships in January. But you see what I did there, right? Walmart Collector Con, McFarlane Toys, that segues right into the exclusive DC Multiverse Batman Who Laughs and Robins of Earth Negative 22 multi-pack they offered last week. To refresh your memory, this set was $40, which is an absolute bonkers of a price, and that may have been a contributing factor to why it sold out super quick. Don't worry, Todd has apparently heard you, and they did post that there will be a restock soon. When? Who knows? But hopefully there's some warning ahead of time. But as you know, there's no laurel resting at the McFarlane offices. They took that opportunity to turn around and reveal the Batman Dark Knight Returns build a horse wave. Look at this crazy bastard thing. Batman, Superman, Robin, and Joker all in that Frank Miller style with a good looking horse that has more articulation than I would have expected. These skew more comic accurate than the armored up Batman from Dark Knight Returns that's already released, I think. It has McFarlaneisms to it. No other info yet, but oh, it's gonna be interesting. I wanna see that horse all broken up in the packages. Then today, and remember I record this on Friday, today is McFarlane Day at GameStop. <laughs> They're getting variants of a few figures from various properties, like the DC Multiverse Mega Fig Swamp Thing. In Todd's State of the Union address earlier this week, he showed this and started talking about it having alternate antlers to the head. Problem was, we hadn't seen the regular Swamp Thing yet. That's okay, last night before the horny version actually went live, there was the standard version on Amazon, Entertainment Earth, Big Bad Toy Store, wherever. It, well, it even went up on GameStop before their exclusive version went up. There's also the DC Multiverse 3 Joker's Comedian Joker from Killing Joke that we thought was a Walmart exclusive before this. The package doesn't actually say only at GameStop, but the promo image posted on McFarland's socials does say GameStop. I don't know. I had an order in at Walmart.com that I think that sold out quick too. But GameStop was easy to get. So I went ahead and ordered there just to have this because out of all the Jokers, this is probably my favorite look. I don't think Walmart's actually added pictures to their listing. So if one were to cancel or say, oopsie, it's gonna be Walmart. For Spawn, there is a bloody violator, which <laughs> we all expected this at some point, but there's actually two versions. There's one signed by Todd and one unsigned. Plain version is 40, the one blessed with ink was 80, and I say was because it sold out fast. Warhammer 40K gets a Raven Guard veteran sergeant, and it's probably one of my favorite colorways so far. I know, black and white, I'm a pretty basic kind of guy, but I like my classics. You just, Bam! Simple color scheme. Oh, there's also the Warhammer 40k Mega Fig Orc Mega Knob with Shuda that we looked at a few months ago, or maybe it was a few weeks. What is time? Finally, the Witcher 3 Mega Fig Ice Giant, bloodied. You you see in a pattern here. But hey, if it's appropriate to splash a little blood and re-release a figure. It, why not? All the links to these are in the description. Oh, Power Rangers, I keep talking about you without a shred of knowledge to back anything up. But I can't help looking. I'm a window shopper when it comes to this property. I like looking at pretty, pretty toys. And I do constantly talk about one day building that Power Rangers team along with the enemies just to have some representation in the display because, again, I like looking and I like toys. But I think I'm waiting for all the companies to get some figures out and then I'll pick and choose. <laughs> Unlimited resources, I would definitely grab the bad guys and beasties from Super 7 though. This week we got our first look at the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Ultimates. And that's right, I'm changing it up. Capital letters and exclamation points can mean several different emotions. I'm going with angry for a while. But it's our first look at Wave 2. The Dragon Zord looks interesting with its bulky proportions and 
lipstick shooting fingers. Red Ranger comes with a ton of accessories, including that. Hey, I've seen that before. That's the 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 dagger flute. Yeah, that's it. Pink Ranger also comes with a heap and helping of accessories. There's bows, there's blasters, there's Salt the Cat. I say that because my oldest daughter at one time had a cat that looked exactly like that and her name was Salt. Mm, that's all I got. Oh wait, Kimberly, I, yeah, that's her name, right? Which jumps nicely over to Rita Repulsa because she also includes the Kimberly head along with a ton of extras. Last week I speculated that because of the intricate paint deco and the nice sculpt and the cloth goods that they may cut back on what they include in the package here, but nope, they went all out here too. Extra heads, hands, the, the keys to the Fortress of Solitude, the staff that gives you directions to the Ark of the Covenant, and a telescope. But it's King Sphinx that really tests my resolve. I have the Hasbro King Sphinx because of the price and it's just a neat looking figure, but the Ultimates! <laughs> it has about 64 more colors than the Lightning Collection version. I've seen people say that there were different costumes used in the show, but I'll go for extra lively every time. Just that iridescent rainbow colors everywhere. It pops out at you. It looks fantastic. Comes with an alternate head and the hooked hook of hookiness. And that's it. But it's understandable because it's a larger figure like the Dragon Zord. $55 a piece due out fall of next year sometime. NECA is celebrating October by giving us glimpses or even full on reveals for figures every night of the month. And when it comes to gargoyles, they showed us the packaging art for Thalog. It wasn't until recently that I realized that Thalog is Goliath backwards. Of course, with my limited gargoyles knowledge and how long it's been since I've actually seen a few episodes, I didn't even know his name was Thalog. But then it was too long after that that I put two and two together and went, oh, yeah. But the package means we're one step closer to sweet, sweet plastic. And that's what really counts. The bigger gargoyle news was the reveal of Bronx. Another addition to the crew, and he just looks badass. That animated look with a realistic twist, plus it amps up that animalistic feel, just, oh, mwah. Not only that, but NECA also showed an alternate set of wings that go with Goliath that are included with Bronx, and that's just icing on the cake. As I've mentioned several times since this line was announced, I love those big, beautiful, spread out wings, but they kill a shelf. I have, well, not just me, a lot of people have been asking for the cape version where it comes and clamps in the front. On top of that, including the wings with Bronx is just well thought out. It, it really kept the collector in mind here. We were all afraid it was gonna be just another Goliath with a different set of wings, and then you have two Goliaths roaming around. Okay, it's not ideal if you only want Goliaths and don't care about the rest, or if you're still wanting a set of wings that are somewhere in between. Not full spread, not wrapped around, just somewhere where it, it looks cool, but the body's uncovered. This does add value to a smaller size character, and then it keeps it more consistent throughout the line, both in package size and price. Which is exactly what NECA said in a following tweet, along with expect humans and Lex to follow this plan. That just confirms more characters down the road, which we knew about. They've been hinting at, oh, we're working on this number of characters, but it's good to hear it again. Don't you just love it when a plan comes together? Mm. And that's it for this week. <laughs> Probably, maybe, doubt it. If I did miss something or something pops up over the weekend, we'll come back around, talk about it next Monday Foosh Live, and then there's next week and the weekly and so on. If you're interested in seeing any of these pictures up close without me all, <laughs> I'll be posting all of those along with links to pre-orders, more information on the Foosh front page Saturday at noon. But if you can't wait that long, it's all in the description. But you'll notice something odd about this weekly, right? No Hasbro. That's because they're saving all of their reveals for next weekend's PulseCon. Hopefully that's just a good old fun time. Gives us a chance to just sit around all weekend, letting the toy news flow over us. But I'm also putting it out there right now. There will be a weekly next week. PulseCon happens over the weekend. Then we'll do a breakdown of all of that for the video at the first of the week but then there will be no weekly on October 30th. That's right, boys, I'm going on vacation. It's been a while. You guys know I love doing this, but I have not skipped a weekly since Toy Fair 2020. <laughs> That's four months short of two years. I just need a change of pace, change of scenery. I'm gonna get out, get away from the computer, get away from the cameras, see what happens. Recharge, refresh, come back, 
talk about two weeks worth of toys. I'm back from vacation. Here's a two hour weekly. If you enjoyed the Foosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Is that right? Somebody pointed out in the last comment section too that I point at the wrong things. Is subscribe over there? Like? Or is that like and that subscribe? Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. Oh, and I said I would come back around and tell y'all about the Bandai America Stranger Things Hopper. Yep, I fell on that sword for you. And while I look at the figure and it looks nice, I don't like the feel. They cap the shoulders to hide that joint but it rotates around and does not do a good job at all. It is way too big to use in 112 scale. It's gappy, it's floppy. Don't go buy that.